This is tonight. I'm Bruce Whitfield and welcome to the program. Nazmira Mula is one of South Africa's top economists. She works at Investec Asset Management. She was recently at the Big Discovery Financial Planning Summit. Nazmira Mula, uh, the finance minister was at the Financial Planning Summit. He painted, I think, quite a positive picture for South Africa, despite the fact that we run the risk of downgrades. We've got a low growth rate. We don't have enough energy. Give me a 30 second take as your perspective on economy South Africa right now. Good afternoon Bruce. I think there's lots of risks facing South Africa but there are also opportunities. There are a lot of things we can fix that are actually very identifiable. It's not a situation where we don't know what's wrong. We know what to do. We, need, we know we need the private sector and electricity. We know we need less regulation affecting business. Um, it, it's just a question of having the bravery to do it. But what is holding us back from doing it? Johan van Sale uh, at, uh, at an abs, uh, abs, uh, was at a, a CISA conference uh, recently made this appeal. So we've talked enough. We talked around each other. We, everybody wants the same thing, and that's a, a sustainable South Africa. But yet we just can't seem to get a gelling between state and business. The problem is there are too many vested interests. So when you start looking at one of the key issues, which is education, you've got teachers' unions who are violently opposed to any sort of reforms in the space. And that's a major problem. If you then start looking at electricity, you have a government which is ideologically opposed to private sector involvement in the space. So it's, it, the absurdity of it was demonstrated this weekend because you have the ANC coming out saying, um, we're going to recapitalize Eskom with private sector money, but it's not privatization. So <laughs> that's, th those are the problems. We know where we want to get to. There's very little agreement on how to get there. Um, and it, becomes, it goes down to, a sort of, I suppose, a central planning issue. And Tantan Nene has, has got a very clear perspective. He's very happy to welcome private sector investment. The president will, at every opportunity, talk about, together we can do more. Um, yet, you've got, on the other side, got Abraham Patel and Rob Davies in, in different economic clusters, um, hell-bent on pulling in a separate direction, it would seem. I think there is a lot of that. And I think everyone's reasonably well-intentioned. So it's not about people it's having... It's not malicious, no. No, it's not malicious. I think, I think there's very little malice in the whole thing. And I think there's just naivete with the belief that the public sector is inherently good and is inherently capable. And I think that we just have to come to terms with the fact that that's not the case. Um, but there's also a breakdown of trust. Um, between public and private sectors, um, and, and with real, they're, they're really good reasons for it. Private sector didn't cover itself in glory with construction, uh, with construction contracts, for example, in the World Cup. Public sector seems, you know, hell bent on avoiding uh, the, certainly the listed public sector, the listed private sector. There doesn't seem to be the sort of trust required to get a decent conversation going. How do we break those barriers? I've been thinking about that for a while, and I really struggle to come up with a reasonable answer. Um, you know, you've seen people move out of government into the private sector. I think once we start seeing people move from the private sector into government, it might help that circle a little bit. That's a, I don't know how we got that long because that's a, uh, in cricketing terms, a five day game versus the 2020 format. When we kind of need a 2020 format solution, don't we? We do, but unfortunately, until we solve that problem, I don't see how we actually solve all of our other problems. Perversely, the electricity crisis could be the catalyst for that considering that we are running out of energy and we need solutions, could the private sector step in and be shown to do good? I think that you make a really good point. I think electricity could force the government to accept private sector um, provision of electricity participation and what this could then do is start to build that trust and start to build that understanding. So that's a hopeful idea. And another idea, one of the speakers earlier today, Siswan Oksana, outgoing CEO of First Rands, um, pioneered a really interesting education initiative. And I think that's starting to build trust with government as well, which is really important. Mm, absolutely crucial. Uh, and it is that participation and showing that money, capital can do good. Uh, the investment industry has got six trillion rand potentially at its disposal to invest. Now, without having prescribed assets, nobody wants to be told what to do with the money, but create an environment in which investors feel positive about investment you can unleash a whole lot of really useful capital. Definitely. So one of the most exciting areas to invest in Europe over the last five years has been infrastructure investments. So you've seen infrastructure funds grow so much in Western Europe and the US that you actually, I had a research note from an analyst on my desk yesterday talking about a bubble in the space. 
South Africa hasn't even started. So there definitely, I think, is room for that. Give me a macro perspective. Moody's, the ratings agency, talking recently about the fact that South Africa will have no ratings movement in the next 12 to 18 months, which is terribly good news because it gives us potentially 12 to 18 months to sort ourselves out and get talking and, and create a, a, a sort of a common narrative, perhaps. And if we don't use this window, we could be in trouble. We have 12 to 18 months. Moody's is the one that I worry least about because we're still two notches above investment grade with yeah. Moody's, three notches above investment grade with Moody's. S&P is the one that I worry about because they're one notch above investment grade. And they have said pretty much the same thing. No change in the rating expected over the next 12 to 18 months unless you have some sort of cataclysmic event, um, which we think is unlikely. So we do have this window. But if we don't demonstrate commitment to reigning in the budget deficit, which Minister Nene has been um, very outspoken about, but now we need to see it actually happen. But Minister Nene doesn't have control over what, uh, uh, what civil servants' wages are going to be. He can give guidance, uh, but if the negotiators, the civil servants, um, push hard, they're pushing for 10, I think we'll probably settle close to 6 or 7. Um, that's a big bill and the civil service isn't getting any smaller. Um, we've had Dina Jemai peterson talking about nuclear power being brought to bear, but doesn't talk about how it's going to be funded. Lots of government departments, lots of ivory towers with lots of big plans, yet there's no sort of central ringmaster pulling it all together and saying, you can have that, you can't have that, you can have this. There's almost this approach that we have an indefinite supply of finance. Well, I think there's a lack of coordination and cohesion amongst the whole thing. And that speaks to the importance to have someone draw it all together. And that is definitely missing. National Development Plan, is anybody treated seriously anymore? There are components of it which are being treated seriously, but not holistically. And I think the important thing about the NDP is we need to see it holistically implemented, and that's not the case yet. So the Treasury takes it seriously, they're putting some weight behind it, but there's not enough other departments doing the same. And so how do we get government singing off the NDP hymn sheet? It's not a perfect solution for South Africa's future. In some ways it undershoots uh, ambition and it, it, it doesn't solve our problems, but at least it's something that hopefully we could agree on. Bruce, I think people make hard decisions when they're forced to, not when they want to. Yeah. So we're seeing it play out in Eskom. The scenario that's playing out there, the chairperson being forced to resign, um, the proposed private sector introduction of capital were unthinkable two years ago. But the situation gets bad enough and we're forced to make hard decisions. And I think that's going to play out in other areas. How do we get over the South African disease of breaking it before we fix it? I think we must understand it's not just us. No, fair enough. We give ourselves a hard time we about do. that. But you see it play out in a number of other countries as well. So India, which has now got a new government in place in the last year, which is trying to undertake reform, some with success, some with less, um, did it because they had to. Um, same thing that's playing out in Brazil. Huge erosion in growth, huge increase in inflation, and now they, they're taking hard decisions. But what is interesting about India was the electorate chose to change. Yes. Um, and, and that's an interesting next 10 year scenario in South Africa perhaps as to how the electorate buys the messaging from the ANC, let's put the ANC at the centre, let's put the FF on the left and let's put the Democratic Alliance on the right. The politics of South Africa are going to play out some interesting scenarios. I know politics isn't your thing, but politics is at the heart of our economy. I think the politics is becoming really quite important. And I think that the competition you're starting to see, particularly in um, certain cities, is already having an impact. So this morning, front page news... Uh, Danny Jordan is going to become mayor of Port Elizabeth, yes. And that happened because suddenly there's competition in the space. You see the ANC in Kauteng taking a much more outspoken role, adopting policies that are um, much more geared at getting this growth going. And the reason why is they're under threat. There's real competition. Competition is good. It's, it's good in economies, it's good in politics, and it's good for our society as a whole. Exactly. It cleans out all those dead old policies. Look, there's a middle ground as well. I mean, America's at the absurd point on the other side, yeah. where there's so much competition and there's so much sclerosis, so we don't want to get there either. Yeah.
Absolutely not. Ms. Mira Muller, you need to go and give a presentation to an audience of 1,500 people. I wish you the best with, uh, with that one. Thank you very much for joining us. That's been tonight with Bruce Whitfield. Ms. Mira Muller is an economist at Investec Asset Management. Her perspective on what has been going on here at the conference, some of the conversations that have been happening here at the conference as well, but also a perspective on South Africa. Best growth estimates for 2015, around 2%. Is that going to be the growth rate we need to pull us out of a potentially serious financial hole? No, it's not. It's all about working together. Johan Patel has been talking about it recently. As Mira Muller adding her voice to that particular debate. Thank you for watching. There'll be more tonight, tomorrow. Till then, good night and goodbye.